Well, last weekend, everybody got a break from me in person because I was hiding a way to do some writing. I don't know if I mentioned this, but instead of vacation, I took a little writing retreat. I have an almost impossible deadline for my next book, a final manuscript by September 1st. I can't imagine I can make that. I'll just keep trying. I like what I'm writing. I wish I had another whole week to just hide away and write. Like I said, I'll just do what I can. But I did one fun thing while I was away. I went to a city soccer game. It was so much fun. That was my main sport. I got to sit next to a buddy of mine who's a former professional soccer player who got tickets. And my brother Dennis, we played a lot of soccer together. It was great. And now I'm back and I'm excited. So. Put this here, and here's the homily. One of the most true things I know is this. Life is both and. Life is not either or. Life is both and. When did you learn that? For me, it was the night my dad died. My dad, younger than I am now, had a, a brain aneurysm and never regained consciousness. Those of you who have experienced the sudden and unexpected death of a loved one, probably experience a mixture of emotions as we did that night, as we gathered around his bedside. For me, it was kind of like a dream, but at the same time, I was painfully aware of how awake I was. It was one of the greatest sadnesses I've ever known. And at the same time, there was so much love in that room. We laughed, we cried, we prayed. And in the empty heartache, I also sensed the presence of God in a way I've never sensed God before. The thing is, none of those things canceled each other out. In those hours, I saw clearly how true it is that life is both and. It wouldn't have to have been for you the death of a loved one which made that clear. Really, all is both and. Today, Jesus puts it this way. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together. Jesus knew that it was not one or the other, either or, but that it was truly both and. That's true of all of life and each of us. The weeds and the wheat grow together. You know, I think we'd rather that it be wheat only. I get that. Um, we might think we could, we might think we should, pull the weeds from a moment. Pull the weeds from this world. Pull the weeds from ourselves. But we can't. Both will always be there. All of life and each of us is always a mixture of both weeds and wheat. And I could give countless examples. I mean, what comes to me now, the my best day will also be imperfect. And even my worst day will have some blessings. This 
church I love is far from ideal, yet it is also my faith home, which I love. You or I might be profoundly aware of our inadequacies and shortcomings, yet we make more of a profound difference in the lives of others than we know. I mean, I could go on. But Jesus said, let the weeds and the wheat grow together. Can we come to peace with that for ourselves? That's true inside of each of us. We're both a mixture of weed and weeds at the same time. I mean, perhaps like me, that thought initially was kind of discouraging a bit, you know, that there will always be weeds in the midst of the wheat. But, but Jesus knows that we need to know this because it's going to help us be free and more alive because it's the truth. And it, it is actually one of the most profound and important truths that I know. And some might argue didn't Jesus suggest that we should be wheat only when he said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect? He did say that. But the word Jesus would have used for being perfect is so different than how we use it. For Jesus, that word would mean be complete, be whole, to live with integrity and inclusion. And some scripture scholars would suggest that where this passage, this phrase from Jesus appeared in the Gospels, suggests that he was really inviting us to live with, to be fully compassionate about the weeds and the weeds in ourselves and in this world. Jesus wants us to grow in our capacity for love and not to strive for flawlessness. In the spiritual world, we actually grow more by getting stuff wrong than by doing it right. We do. And the only perfection available to us is the honest and gentle acceptance of our own imperfection. You know, our friends who are in 12-step programs, all of you who are, typically understand this much more than those of us who aren't. You know, at AA meetings, folks don't say, I used to be an alcoholic. They say, I am one. And this is great wisdom. One of my friends said, I've been clean and sober for 12 years, but naming out loud that I am still an alcoholic reminds me that I need a support system around me, that I've got to keep doing my work. If I act like that is not in me, I'll try to fool myself. I can go back to my old ways and be fine. We all need to know that we will always carry the weeds, carry the weeds of our weaknesses inside and along with the goodness of the wheat that we are. We are, I mean, clearly each a mixture of both. We are at once sinners and at the same time loved by God with an intensity beyond imagining. In a world that is frightening and fragile, we are at the same time profoundly safe in the arms of God. And we are each just one grain of wheat in this 
in the immense field of this world. Yet at the same time, we are each uniquely precious and unbelievably beloved. Yes, the good, the bad, the happy, the sad of everything and everyone in each moment do not cancel each other out. They did not on the night my dad died. They don't in you and me. What is, they don't in this world. What is broken and sinful in me and in you doesn't deny the best in us. Jesus put it this way, let the weeds and the wheat grow together. I wish it, I wish it had not taken something as dramatic as my dad's son death to realize just how true that is, how right Jesus is. But I'm glad I know it now. Life is both and. It is one of the most true things that I know.